some of their former coaches, they weren't necessarily pro players in the past. Now you have Keem. Keem's been in the brightest of all the lights playing on main stage, playing for championships. And I think that is really going to be the difference for this Hive squad going into it. Yeah, it might be a learning process. We might not see it out of the gate week one, week two, whatever it may be. But I think once we're all said and done, once the Pro League qualifiers and this team gets their reps, I think this will be a team to beat. All right, Remedy picked Vascar. One, let's see if they picked it for a reason. This is the one they wanted to take and lead the series in this best of three. But Hive, a very decent Vascar team overall. Bit of a standstill, though. You know, I'm seeing a big difference, a big contrast, if you will, between teams we've watched in the past. Typically, already, engagements are going down, but it took a little bit of time. Maybe both teams respecting each other, but TJ finds a different angle. And TJ is a player that only got better over time, especially with this time on UYU. He's turned into a monster. Yeah, that, that's in the kind of the history of, of subs, of fifths of fourths playing with UIU. You kind of saw it with Shock. You kind of saw it with a couple of these other players. When you join that roster, you kind of get a different outlook on the game. And a, bring it to another roster. You saw, what, like I said, when Shock left that team, when players like Powers was just a sub for that team. You see Powers on this team now. You kind of see their game get up a little bit. And I like what Hive's doing right here to open up this game. They kind of stretch both sides of the map, bringing it down to two different 2v2s. They're forcing Remedy to not only play into their strength, but they have to think about every move they're making. Great elimination coming through from Solars, but it's been counteract. So on this side of the map, TJ versus Days in a 1v1 for the hill. Remedy may be down, but they're not out just yet. But it is getting a little bit crazy at this point in time. TJ, though, in a 1v1, now 2v1, mind you. His player seven days looks to stay up. He's going to be full red, does get the break, but can't get the full cap. And Hive is easily going to be able to dance around and get that four themselves. Red nine up ahead, though, is going to be joined by his teammate there. And uh, they're going to take their time once again. Hefe in the background. Hefe has a longstanding... Uh, history whenever it comes to gears itself as well and i'm hoping that experience really carries through so we can guide these team or this at least teammates on remedy Talk about experience particular experience with some of the players on this ross of a great defense coming through so far in some tj working together to try to get these downs it's actually on two different sides of the map great plays by tj big double kill coming through third and fourth players dead so what i thought was going to be a win by time hive looking at triple cap dominating the lending portions of that one and i gotta say remedy in that one they kind of just let this one slip right through their fingers they didn't really have any proactive moves they didn't really work as a unit they didn't really win any convincing fights they kind of just let hive gain inch by inch and suffocate them out of that round and it was a very slow start too wasn't it as hive was just kind of trying to fill out what remedy wanted to do you see days the only one with an elimination to his name and hopefully they'll be able to step it up it's a very slay heavy map it's a map that uh, really favors constant rotations constant interactions on those objectives Probably see those ball talks come out on both ends. It's pretty much the standard play. And I'm curious to see, will Hive continue to speed up their gameplay? They started off sluggish in the initial, and I say sluggish not in a negative connotation, but in the way that they just were kind of trying to see what Remedy was throwing their way. But I want to see if they get a little bit more confident, right? If they're saying, all right, Remedy's really not all cut out for the Pro League. So let's continue to push them and take the fights to them. But it looks as if we're going to have another 2-2 two, two split. It looks like player two, that's going to be TJ once again, looking to challenge onto Tank. I like our remedy. They, they were kind of like sure of what they wanted to do. They did their 2-2 two -two split, but on the side of Hive, he kind of saw Solars taking his time, running across the center of the map, making sure that he knew the exact numbers. And look at him playing around in the middle. He's trying to get some shots. And this is where I always tell people, the amount of times you hit 99, 98, imagine if a player just got that couple extra percents in order to take down that player. That is going to be huge. And that comes from experience from the side of players on Hive. You see the down coming through, but nobody able to clean it up just yet for Remedy. It does look like they're finally going to get offensive, but they played right into the hands of Hive. Immediately, TJ does get clean up and take it out so once again we see a 1v1 here on this neutral hill 1v1 indeed and uh man hefe already dropped off days now fighting for actually this is the same situation he was in before but this time it's a 1v1 and they'll handle solars with ease letting them just crawl on the ground a little bit hey again like you said man it's not disrespect sometimes it's just a matter of numbers right you don't want them to have a force that coming off a of spawn the longer you let them sit on the ground the longer they're going to be out of the game just so it happens, you can know, you can give a little bump pump right there as they're down on the ground anyway. But great free push coming through from Remedy. I like what I'm seeing early on. I know you were telling me about this squad. Unfortunate for them to forfeit last week, but 
That's probably unfortunate for them. A blessing for every of their team as they're looking to get two hills in their control again. TJ and Solars have an answer back on the other side of things. No team looking like they're going to gain points for just a moment, but it's going to be Remedy as the option of both hills under their control. But they're going to have to go overcome a 2v3 scenario here in just a short moment. Nobody's supporting Remedy more than Denial in chat. He said, hey, this is my team to be in Grand Finals. Well, we'll see if that's going to come to fruition. This is a much closer round than round number one, but Hive still has the lead and the objective. But look at Remedy all over the map, just playing around. As player four Solars goes down once again, Hefe is going to be able to lock in B. This battle, though, for A is going to be so big, and Noe is looking to go huge. And as a matter of fact, he does. His red nine falls, and Hive continues with that two to one hill advantage. Sometimes I wonder, is Noe just thinking about how I could world star somebody when he's in certain situations? <laughs> how can I wrap my camera 360 degrees and kill somebody? See if he's had the opportunity you, to do it again. Evil mastermind. Evil mastermind is what he is. Actually did get shut down there. Did have a Lancer out. I wanted to see him with his shotgun. And that's exactly what happened. Noe put the shotgun a little bit more, but no. Nice attempts from Hive. They playing a nice push and pull game here. TJ and Noe get taken out on one side of the map, even though the decap is going to come through. It's going to be up to Enzim and Solars once more on the other side, making sure that they at least keep the one hill under their control. That way they keep the point game. Big shots coming out from Solars. Nice cleanup by TJ. And there goes a second one. So there goes two hills going in favor of Hive in the later portions of this game. They only need one. So Hive looks like they're going to go up two to zero over Remedy and two rounds. Remedy's just getting closer to finding back into this one. It's just hopefully it's not too little too late. You can only hope it isn't in fact that way. Noe will take down Hefe. I got to say though, Remedy is still looking good, but they're always falling a bit short. See as the rounds do continue on, if they will better their chances to maybe take this victory. But overall though, Hive looking good. They're starting to read Remedy, see what they're doing overall. Their roles are pretty much solidified, right? TJ loves to go to tank. He's gonna fight that out. That's where the majority of the engagements are gonna go down. And you know what, for Hive, that's a good uh, kind of strategy to have in your back pocket, given the fact that if a weapon is placed over at tank, where we normally see power weapons placed, TJ he's gonna have a very good chance of locking that in place. Either way, though, it's going to be a bit before we get to that point. And I believe we're going to go ahead and uh, get our retros out. And there's one retro. And I'm curious, will Hive opt to go for an Ensign or go for the retro themselves? Or maybe even a Talon. Excuse me. That'll probably be the, the next thing. But so it looks like we're going to have a Boltok and a Talon. So a bit of a different strategy. What do you think about that? Boltok and Talon versus a retro. I mean, right now, early on, I do like the Boltog Talon split. Even though the Retro is more powerful overall, you're able to kind of spread out your utility or, or your aggression with these pistols. It's just a matter of on the side of the Boltog. Can Hefe put it to use? Can he nail together some headshots? And early on, he's going to have an opportunity to do that. Three players from high, wasting no time, trying to over push, try to get both of the home hills under their control. Remedy starts off the gate hot. They managed to get a two to one hill advantage, but as you said, though, Hive is already there to counteract that strategy. It's going to be a mismatch on a 3v2. So Remedy is obviously committing quite a bit for this A push. On the other side, though, Hive is going to now challenge onto Hefe, who's going to be isolated himself. It looks like a breakthrough is coming in. Solars, though, around the corner is going to pick up one. No one will pick up yet the other. And this 2v3 goes to the way of Hive. They are now just have one more player and they handle their business. Beautiful stuff. And now Hive is going in for the domination and they're going to get it. Wow. As a matter of map goes one minute, two minute, three minute, five just seems to have their game plan under control and they're kind of sticking to it. I said that is going to be the key to victory against this Remedy squad, a team that rightfully so may not have the most experience under their belt. I do think they might be lacking a little bit of an IGL, but nonetheless, they're putting it together in some of these team fights when it comes down to rotations, when it comes down to being in the right place at the right time, they're just outmatched by Hive. When it comes down to this weapon selection, you see High wasting no time. Like I said, their game plan incends directly mm. onto the battlefield coming into this one. On the other side, though, Remedy That's... having different plans. They want a team fight. Oh, that was Hive. That was that was Hefe putting that down. Hefe's Remedy. I'm an idiot. Hive no, is now, know, or excuse me, Hefe is going, hey, look, hey, man, sometimes, you know, I'm so used to seeing it anyways. <laughs> Remedy, though, they do want that team fight, but again, it's going to benefit TJ. It really is going to benefit TJ. And I think he's going to be the one to pop off here. And quickly, he's going to be challenged right off the rip. It's going to be a 1v2, though. Either way, Red Knight manages to get out of there, but Days around the corner. Hefe's, or TJ's going to manage to hit a beautiful shot there on today's. 
And that's going to be two players down, and the Torque Bow is going to go to the hands of Hive, and Enzim's going to pick that up. And again, I don't think that was the play. Yeah, they did want the team fight, but Jacob, I, I knew it wasn't going to help him. No, he hopefully he doesn't bite up more than he can chew in this situation here. He's actually finding a way to almost get a flank on Red Nine. Unfortunately for him, he's not going to get enough damage to get that down, but he's going to be a thorn in the side. Great Torque Bow from Enzim. That's going to be a little bit of a help over towards Noe on the other side of things. Can he land this one? Oh my god, he does it again. That's going to be a double kill. Noe finally getting taken out, but the time is going to be bought for the rest of his team. He's looking at the top half of the map. C is finally going to be capped up by Hive, so they're going to have two full hills under their control, and they're going to have an opportunity with these marks, with these spots, to try to catch these players on rotation, or at least get as much information as they can, so they can go ahead and slot their players in for defense. Ends up still one bolt to his name that he can put to good use here. His remedy looks to maybe force him back. He's going to go ahead and rotate off. And Enzim is now going to find a different angle. And he's going to be able to see pretty much anybody from Remedy who's going to push in. I think Daze might become the first victim, but he's backing off here. Maybe even want to challenge onto Hefe. Looks to push out through mid. And this is going to be Remedy's opportunity to push up. And they're looking to make good on it. Daze is going to be tagged. Enzim forced to back off. And I can't believe it. Remedy actually does get the break. And Enzim wastes the final torque. So Remedy now in control with the 2 to 1 hill advantage. The Enzim's going to be wasted as well. But Enzim gets a full spread. And Daze takes him down. That was a great push from Remedy. And I think Enzim was kind of putting his eggs into getting those eliminations. Love to see him back off, use his teamwork, but two hills going to continue to be in the side of Hive. No, he needs to buy his team some time here. Great connection coming through. That is going to be a trade, but they're going to get spawned behind. You see Enzim already in his back. No, he will be popped up here in a few seconds. They're looking to get a sandwich as TJ tries to backtrack. He does have that talent pistol in there. Talk about the utility with the pistols, but wow, quick push coming through from both Relics and Days. Going to catch TJ all by his lone. Some big elimination coming through. Solars goes down as well to a two hills in favor of Hive is now going to swap two hills in favor of Remedy and no points in favor of Hive. Triple cap domination sounding off for a moment. Can TJ prolong this round? He's actually going to back off because it's Noe who's going to keep this round going. And Noe would knew he had to rotate down. Unfortunately, though, a trade between him and Red Nine, and that's now another three down. Solar's last standing as Remedy continues to push up. Solar's will drop off. Remedy, no one's going to be on B, but it doesn't even matter. Hive doesn't have the manpower to be able to get off spawn and travel across the map to get the breaks. And if they do, it's going to come down to the final second. But either way, Remedy is holding their own. And finally, they're going to put a point on the board. Three to one. Torque Bow didn't have too much of an impact overall. In fact, I think it benefited Enzo more than anything right on Hive. But regardless, though, Remedy shows some signs of life. Let's see if they can keep the momentum pushing forward. Hopefully they can chain together these rounds. You can't come back like that and put yourself in a position and win a big round against this Hive squad and fall out flat in the following round. You got to use this as a momentum, even though you might not be firing all cylinders just yet, but this has to be momentum to get there. Now these weapon selection, you're finally going to be able to select it first. You have no choice but to upgrade one of your pistols to a retro, and I like where they put it as well because eventually that could be an instant toss from all the way up there. On the other side of things, it's going to be up to Hive to finally build up their side weapon. You can expect to see a retro next round, possibly a shock the round after, but you both know both of these teams are going to be fighting for this Torque Bow. The hills have been swapped, so you're not only going to win the Torque Bow in the hill, it's just going to be the Torque Bow. And Remedy in this round, they just have to get as much value, value from the retros as possible. If they can do so, they'll be okay. But either way, for TJ to go cross tank, wow. he's very comfortable with this fight. I think on this side, right, it just kind of benefits him more. It's close quarters. He enjoys it. He likes it. And you can really see him excel in those close quarter engagements. And he's just going to go back off, get the torque, and then Hefe is just going to go ahead and take himself out. Hive, though, with the 2-1 to hill advantage, they have the torque, and now they're going to set up for Remedy's push. I think if you look at the uh, map, when that players did spawn back up, you can kind of see that Five. They didn't want to overstay their welcome. They didn't want to be aggressive on the side of the map because it's going to be up to Remedy to not only push through that tank side, but continue pushing forward if they want to break F. And it's going to be up to Hive to go ahead and spot this one out. And it does look like they got the information needed. Great oh. torque coming out from TJ. He has all the answers for Hive right now. Every single player from Remedy that catches himself out of position, he is just watching, waiting for that moment to strike. 
a red nine. Oh, and a great connection on a Hefe across the map. Red nine, he was torqued out, and he was the player for Revity who picked up the retro. So the retro no longer going to be a factor, at least as of now, until it spawns back up. Days now in a tough position, bit of a misroll, and TJ will make him pay. Hive now has netted themselves a very decent lead. And it looks like Ramity is going to force their hand onto F. It's going to be a 3v3, and if Hive wins this fight, that's only going to better their lead. Yeah, that's just been very unfortunate on the side of Remedy, though. Those eliminations came through. That push was going to be sound, but it was, like I said, those eliminations, those forced those players of Hive to kind of spawn back into the spawn and basically allow them to set up for this. The great fire players are funneled in towards the middle. They're just going to push them off the hill, especially with Solar's going down there. So Remedy's going to have this moment to strike back and decap this hill. But if you look at the score, that's a massive lead to overcome. They're going to need a triple neutralization to put themselves back into this one. It does look like they're going to start that neutralization on the E hill, but... Doesn't look like it's going to come through just yet. TJ battling back. He's putting out a lot of damage for his squad. It looks like he might win this altercation. This is a 1v2 scenario, Taylor. Icky, I'm out on top. Massive blows <laughs> being shot out. But unfortunately, that numbers from Remedy, they're going to solidify that kill. But like I said, the hills are what's important here. Insim already took down Hefe, and that kept him on the hill. No, he has to come in to pick up days, but regardless, though, Insim held his own on the D hill, and that continues to increase the lead for Hive. Hefe now forcing the engagements. No, he cleans him up with ease, and Hive is well on their way to leading four to one as Ramity is not going to be able to take this round at this point in time. It's not going to be able to cover the difference. Insim, great job on his part. The Torque Bow, maximum value from Hive. Even though TJ misses that shot, it doesn't matter. What happened before that? is what mattered. Hive is looking good, and this is looking like their map. And EJ is at the right place at the right time at almost every turn of this match. Started off early on with that tank push. He got those quick eliminations, got the Torque Bow in his hand. He almost held those Torque Bows and the Torque Bow itself the entirety of this round. He was either getting eliminations or getting the damage needed to force players off of certain covers. So now with map points, now underway, they're going to go ahead and upgrade it to the Hammer Burst. I do like that upgrade, especially the position they're at. That allows for long-range damage to come through, where the Retro kind of specializes in that short-range damage. And they know they're not going to go up against that Retro because it has to be upgraded to Incendiary Grenades to match the Hive Incendiary Grenades. So in order to come back from this one, Remedy needs a bit of a miracle. And it has to start here. They can't start off slow in this round either. And Hive loves their Hammer Burst. I swear to you, every map they play on, there's going to be a Hammer Burst place. They just seem to favor it. This is it, right? Remedy has to take this round, and it starts with the Torque. Now, granted, I think Remedy is going to feel a lot more comfortable being on the side that they're on, and TJ doesn't feel as comfortable to push up, but Solar's already is going to pick up Hefe, and now he's going to be able to push in onto Red Knight and Co. And go ahead and take his time, but then, now he sees an opportunity. He goes for the quick pick. Let's see if he's able to secure it. He actually goes back on the inside to assist his team. Red Knight full red. And Enzim is going to be able to take him down with the miss roll. Torquo now into the hands of Enzim, and it's looking dangerous for the boys on Remedy. Luckily, on the other side of the maps, though, they were able to 2v1, and I do believe Catch Noe out of position to keep this one going. So even though Hive is going to have this lead ticking in their favor, it's going to be a tough comeback for Remedy to answer back. Flash grenades being tossed out. It does look like three players are pushed in. They need to be careful with this Torque Bow because initially that could happen. And it's up to TJ yet again, almost threading the needle to get two. But it's going to be Enzim getting that down. That's going to allow TJ to push up and put this pressure on the players of Remedy. But he needs to be careful. In just a few seconds, there will be a player spawning up in his side. So positioning and knowing what to do next is going to be important. And Noe forcing the domination. He's actually on all fours, but are they going to be able to get a touch to get in there? Oh, they will not. Days goes for the row, but Noe being down but not out was able to capture the hill and the domination. 5-1 victory for the boys on Hive. They played that so very well. Ramity only able to secure one round, but to be honest with you, Ramity never looked in control despite that one round. And I got to say for TJ, he played very well, not only in the slaying category with 15 or 14 total kills. He also had those 16 assists. He was putting in the work in multiple ways, and he was the glue that held the team together. Good on high for taking a 1-0 lead.
I, I like what I saw there early on, too. It was Hefe who got caught out of position on that final round. I don't know where he got Lancer down from. I don't know how he took so much damage, but he was unable to anchor those steps. So even though they did have good side remedy towards that tank, Hefe going down early cost them big. And you kind of saw it. I wasted no time surrounding that tank and taking player inch by inch, and especially with that instant towards the backside, not letting anybody escape. And you know what? I got to say this for the side of Remedy. I, they didn't get much value at all uh, for the retro that they that they had. I mean, they had a retro pretty much for the most part, right? But they just got zero value from it. And that's highly unfortunate because I felt, especially on Vascar, with the angles that you have, the fight for the Torque Bow, that could have been incredibly, incredibly valuable. But it is what it is. Remedy will, in fact, fall behind. And unfortunately, that was their map pick, Jacob. I mean, this is the one they wanted to start off with. And now we're about to head into Harbor, a map that Hive has been playing very well on. Yep. And this is where I, I got a question. Do you put that big weapon down early if you're Remedy? I like to see a lot of that drop shot play towards the top side. You got to forget about map number one. You got to worry about winning five rounds here on map number two, Harbor. And we've seen this in Gears of War 4. It's kind of similar here, but with 4v4, that leaves a lot of lanes open. That leaves a lot of avenue and opportunity for these players to take advantage. And I want to see Remedy force that big weapon up top, force a 3v3 or a 4v4 fight. That way you take away some of the strategy from Hive because you saw a lot of different twists and turns coming out from Hive in that one. You got to limit those opportunity you know the scary thing though about placing a big weapon down much like we witnessed on Vascar was the fact you're going against uh you know you're going against <laughs> tj right tj was the front spawn of uyu he was the guy to go out there and get those quick picks to get those first kills and if you place a big weapon down much like you did on Vascar on harbor you're once again going to be going against tj granted it's inevitable it has to happen but he's so effective at getting in and getting out and then passing off the torque or the big power weapon to whoever needs it so he can then go back and start slaying out as he typically does it's just kind of a lose-lose situation yeah you do change the fight but again you also kind of favor to the strong suits of some of the individuals that are on high it's just going to be a tough win overall and remedy has a hard hard win ahead of them or a hard victor or a hard map in general ahead of them i don't know if they're going to be able to do so but we've been talking a lot about negatives when it comes to remedy were there any positives to take away that you witnessed on Vascar? I mean, you can see that their shotgun skills there, their individual skill is there. It's just you got to be able to plan for it. And that's what I'm saying. When you come into a map like Harbor, where you, you have that high ground, you can put a drop shot down. The reason why I say you put it down early, because then you're forcing the hive to kind of build their weapons around it, or they have to take that big risk to put a weapon either down low, middle, or even sure, farther yeah. down low on the B side. So I'm going to have to see Remedy play into their strengths. Like I said, that shotgun fights, those team fights towards the top side. That is going to be their key to a victory here in this one because I don't think they have the depth or the strategy to play the long game against a team like Hive. And, and even though Hive wins that 5-1, to one, did we see a lot of readjustments? Did we see a lot of teamwork uh, and kind of reacting to what Remedy was throwing out? Or was it more so just they were just out slaying the Remedy boys? I, I think it was... As 70 30 i think 30 was a kind of hive reacting to kind of what they were doing but most of it was just hive kind of taking it to them winning a lot of those fights and forcing them to react but like i said they were also limiting their options of what they were able to do they stacked three players to push one side and then they held their guy far far back on the other side of the map so that way mm. you kind of have to push into those lancers and you're allowing the team of hive to get as much time necessary to take over these hills. This map on Harbor is going to play a little bit differently, especially if we're able to put those big weapons down to kind of force that big weapon fight towards the top. Like I said, that's going to be the key. I'm, I'm yeah. going to lose hope little by little if that big weapon is not there early. And, and there was a purpose behind that question. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is like Hive, you said 70-30. Granted, did they have a chance to really react to what Remedy was throwing at them? I mean, after all, if they're out slaying the team, you really don't have to react, right? You're the ones who are taking the fight to them, and then Remedy is the team that has to react. But it, let's say uh, Remedy does fall here on Harbor, and they lose 2-0, right? F and I, they can slay out much like Hive can, so then therefore it is going to be a game of reacting to what the enemy team is throwing at them. But either way, let's see if Remedy can be a little bit better off here on harbor for red nine though starting off strong it seems as both players are going to be down for hive who ended up going for the challenge that was tj and enzo red nine and relics handled that to a t solars is now keeping his head down and it looks like remedy might be doing okay here but granted i does have the objective this is just so unfortunate for hefe he's having all the trouble in the world getting out of spawn i don't know if he has rubber band effect i don't know if he's trying to bungee or whatever it may be but 
Fighting an up top three before fight for Remedy. They did get taken out early. Or they actually won the up top early, I should say. But it's gonna can they hold it? Mm. No, they cannot end them. Making that one look easy. Taking out two players. And now it's gonna be up to Hefe. Like I said, maybe he's trying to get it together here, but nope. It's gonna be up too high. But are they gonna take full advantage? Or are they gonna give him a chance? <laughs> I think they're just going to take him down and kind of back off a little bit. Maybe some connection issues or something. But regardless, though, Remedy is coming out of the spawn. And Hive is just going to play good old defensive work. They don't want to push up for the domination. They're going to allow Remedy to push up once again. But the lead from Hive right now is, is pretty monumental. Remedy is going to have a pretty big hill to climb. They're going to have to do it pretty quickly. This is almost like their, their final team fight. If they fall here to Hive, it's pretty much GG on this round. Yep. Can't even really stop to capture the middle hill just yet on B, but Hefe does go down again. Revive's coming through, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Ooh, Big elimination for TJ again. Days is down. Four players eliminated. You talk about that being in the final attempt. You were 100% right as Hive continue to steamroll and take round number one and map number two and keep the momentum on their side, but I gotta wonder Hefe... Can he get back into this one? I don't know if his connection is going to be able to work for him here now. Well, we'll definitely find out. Obviously, as this next round will play out, we're either going to be talking for a little bit and have the podcast come back, Jacob, or we will be casting some good action. Either way, the bull talks are going to be placed down. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of curious if maybe a long shot comes out, much like it did for F and I. I just want to see more oh, shots like no. exploits is popping off. I doubt it's going to be there, but... It's, it's just so like good it. to see, though. You don't like uh, what? See, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the bull talks. I told you, I want that big weapon up top early if you're Remedy. Especially if Hefe can't even make it out of spawn. Force that team fight up top and get rewarded for it. Especially since you know Hive placed that bull talk down low. That means when it comes to a shot grenade on both A and C hills, you'll be evenly matched. All right, here we go. The fight once again. Remedy pulled it off last time, but it looks like Hive learned from their mistakes. And Enzim is going to put the final dot there. Noe will also pick up Days. Hefe last up here. He's the one who went down low to pick up that bolt top, fighting for B, but now the Lancer Fire comes in. Solo's going to get the cleanup, and Hive is already going for the domination as Ramity is breaking out of spawn. It's going to be a 2v2, and uh, Enzim's going to go in and back off. Lancer out. Relics, though, looking to push in, but he gets taken down. Red 9 now, looking for the cleanup. Big 1-2 punch does come through, and it's successful, but already onto the backside. Red 9 is going to be taken down. Noe is there. Hefe now coming out of spawn. He's going to be Lancer. He's going to be bolt talk down and a is now going to be captured it seems from the boys of hive as remedy is going in for their final touches combinations these trades that's going to be crucial velix you need to at least take one with you that's going to be the key days went down relics went down no more trades coming through red nine you need to take out one of the mvps of the squad tj that's going to be three straight kills to win the next round that's going to be two to zero in favor of hive and that's why i said that big weapon going down up top is crucial now if you place it up there you're going to be behind two weapon placements not just one. Giving that bolt tag down low to Hefe was not the key to your success. I want to see that weapon placed up top, especially if Hive upgrade that bolt tag. But you got to think Hive is going to go ahead and place that talent towards the side, just so that way anything gets thrown at them and they're ready for it to come. Absolutely. And that talent is going to be hugely beneficial, especially for that big uh, power weapon plate. And it looks like Relics is going to go ahead and place something over in Stern potentially. As I kind of talk it through, most likely going to be a Torque, though. Maybe even a drop, but I think a Torque is going to be more impactful overall. But then again, it's a double-edged sword, right? If you don't get it, you're going to have many talents, players, and boom shot gets placed. We don't see that too often, but hey, it is a power weapon, and it does demand some attention. Yep. I kind of I kind of see why the drop shot is not placed, because it's kind of the backup plan, the boom. You have to arch it a certain way, so if you, you find yourself losing this battle, it's... You can kind of battle back against a boom shot more so than a drop shot, but you have to kind of be in it to win it here. TJ quickly mm. going in, takes a ton of damage, unable to get eliminated. Days actually gets taken out as well. Big flank coming through from Remedy, but nobody's staying alive to sell it. But that's actually going to be a big clutch play. Relics, and there goes the decap on the other side of things coming out from Hefe, and that's exactly what you have to do there. If you're lagging a little bit, your connection's not allowing you play to your strength. You put a stoppage to the points and then go ahead and gain that neutral hill. That's going to force play players to you and now you can have an opportunity to battle back from your home hill as well get yourself a little bit of a lead here notice though the pressure onto the home hill of remedy and uh you know it may be few players from hive there 
but they're not allowing them to breathe. The smoke is going to be there. A little bit of chaos. Of course, Snowy has been tagged up. Red Knight pushes in, slides, and gets the elimination. And that's going to alleviate some of the pressure to allow Remedy to finally get their home hill. But in the meantime, though, the battle on B is won from Solars. And Hive has that 2-1 to one hill advantage. And I don't think TJ has used the boom. And unfortunately, Hefe will, in fact, disconnect. And now it's going to be a 4v3 round already underway. And I believe Hive is going to go ahead and push forward. And I noticed uh, this split with 44 more so than ever. Those players are just getting tossed and left on the ground. Hefe now leading his team out to the wolves as Hive looking to solidify yet another round victory. And if you're Hive, I want to end this one quick. Don't let these players stay warm on the sticks. Just give away all their chance to play. Force them to sit and spawn. Force them to wait here in this next one. But Relic is going to go and try wide button solos. <laughs> You take the little victories while you can. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, they know they're going to lose this round, but they have to start thinking of something. Like I said, strategy is going to be a key. They dropped out a huge opportunity with dropping that drop shot down early or boom shot, whatever they wanted to choose to be. But now you, get, you just got to kind of forget about the mistakes of the past and figure out how we're going to maneuver from here on out, especially if Hefe finds his way back into this game. He should find his way back into the game. Either way, Remedy most likely not going to win this round. As you saw earlier, though, I love how you put it. Relic's getting that little little added victory, right? Get the victory when you can. Either way, though, Hive will, in fact, take it. They're going to be leading 3-0 to zero as we wait for Hefe to get back into the mix. Sol is going to pick up that fresh boom. Did TJ get any value from the boom other than just forcing Remedy to go for that initial fight? I don't even know. I don't know if he used it. I don't, I don't, think know. He used I don't know what he did. He didn't have it after the initial fight. He either died or he used it on nothing and picked right back up his Lancer. Either way, I mean, but I mean, we knew the whole point, right, was just to force the engagement up top regardless, right? Get that head-to-head -head fight going in. It's not necessarily about the value you get from the boom more so than you get the value from just getting that engagement, getting that early fight in general. And uh, a lot of lives can be lost there. On the last round of the first half, we'll wait for Hefe here, but we'll get to see how the weapons will develop, though. Gonna be key. You got to think on the side of Hive. You got to continue to upgrade that Talon pistol. Put the next weapon there. Eventually, you'll get that shock. And then once you have that shock there first, that's basically a free round. So, it'll be interesting to see what Hive chooses to do, especially when they're in the driver's seat. But standard gameplay, they know their win condition. They're gonna go ahead and stick to it. On the side of Remedy, though, this is where it does get interesting. You almost got to think they got to start building up to get something on the side. Or maybe possibly put a drop shot on the other side of the map. Force Hive into two different scenarios. But my original key to victory hmm. was going to be... What? That's interesting, isn't it? That's... Didn't expect that. You know, you don't even fight for that. That doesn't really even have an impact. Like, who's going to prioritize the fight for the Marksa? Right? It's kind of one of those things like, all right, if you're in that area, just go and pick it up. You know, I think more so than anything. Interesting placement with the Marksa. But hey, we are going to be waiting on Hefe for a little bit. Hive does lead 3-0, to zero, and they've been looking pretty solid. Not going to lie. TJ's been slaying out. He's been getting those quick picks uh, on that. Uh, but well, actually, we only seen it once. But again, we knew that was going to be the factor, right? Whenever it comes to yep. TJ, he's just so good at getting those quick picks. It's much like Rushy's, right? Rushy's just so good for getting the quick picks as well. Uh, you just have certain players that dominate it. TJ's one of them. Ramity, though, struggling. Could be because of connection. But regardless, though, it's all the same. 3-0 lead for Hive. Yeah, but to me, regardless of connection, uh, I think their strategy was kind of flawed from the very beginning. Like I said, you needed to put that big weapon down, especially mm. since Hive won that first round. They put that bolt talk down low. And with that drop shot, if you were boom shot, if you would have placed it high side, when it came to the retro, when it came to the Gorgon pistol, I say Gorgon pistol, if you guys are OGs from Gears of War 2. I mean, the Talon pistol, <laughs> uh, it looked very similar. Um, that would have put you dead even when it comes to having that shock. That shock would have been up at the same exact round as Hive shocks have been. But instead, for some reason, you wanted to put that bullet talk pistol down low to the player that's lagging, that's not really going to help you, that's not part of your win condition. So to me, you were kind of doomed from the start. So not only do you have to fight uh, against Mount Rushmore of all opportunities here, you're <laughs> going to need a miracle on your side, and then you got to sprinkle in some hope or something. Because right now, down three to zero as well, it's just yeah. not looking good from Remedy. And it's highly unfortunate, right? Because Ramity, remember, round one, they came out hot. They were able to slay out on Winch. They were able to take down the team of Hive and then uh, kind of go through and, and look pretty good. But it is what it is. Things do happen, and we're going to figure those things out. We're going to take a quick little break, though. When we come back, hopefully, we'll be continuing Harbor between Hive and Ramity.
Welcome back, everybody. We're now into the action. Now, Hefe, unfortunately, the connection issues are just on oh, Hold up a second. Oh, oh. I don't know what just happened. I don't even know we're going to break that down in a sec. But just to give you the information, Hefe is not going to be back, at least whenever it comes to Harbor. But C-Trax is going to be the coach for this Ramity roster. He is now filling in place of Hefe, and they will continue to play it out with Hyde with the 3-0 lead. Yeah, I wonder here if they find themselves forcing a map number three. Hefe's back online. What do you do in that situation? You keep your coach, keep your player. Doesn't really matter because they got to make it there. Right now, Enzim and TJ working together. Solar's actually trying to make it happen. Big eliminations coming through. Three members dead on the side of Remedy and immediately set their eyes on the fourth in Relic, doing everything he can to get the damage out, but he does get taken out by both Noe and Solar's. They're going to try and stagger these deaths a little bit before looking to capture that hill and swing the win condition Ooh. over towards their hands. And no respect being shown from Noe. Doesn't matter if you have your fourth in here, your fifth, your sub, your manager, your mom, your dad. I'm going to take you out nonetheless. <laughs> or Jacob, too. Hold on. That's what I'm, Jacob, I want to see you coach a team, man, just because there's that slight chance that I know during an E-Days or something that you're like, Jacob, it's your time to shine because you talk a big game, brother. You talk a big game. I want to see if you can back it up. Let, let, let Hive know I'm here and I'm ready. I, I'll, I'll be the assistant to Keem right now and I'll be the official sub on that roster. But right now, it doesn't even look like Hive is going to need the sub. They're not going to need the coach. They're not going to even need help right now. TJ is just doing it all himself, keeping Relics busy and immediately backing up, making sure that the two hills are going to continue to be under their control. And I love what they do. They're just so quick with it. They don't waste their time getting the elimination. There's no hill up there. There's no threat of being broke as the coach does get taken out. So Solar's looking to try to triple cap dominate, but Red Nine doing all he can to keep his team into this one. Going up against Snowy, he gets taken out, and nobody from the side of Remedy is going to be close enough to get this touch. And Hive is going to go up four to zero over Remedy, one step closer to advance into our Challenger Series qualifiers, number two finals. Highly unfortunate that, you know, obviously Hefe ended up uh, spawning out, or excuse me, uh, lagging out, but. It is what it is. You know, watching Ramity, we, we got the saw or we, we witnessed a full map between these two on Vascar, uh, 5-1 victory for Hyde. And it just comes to show you that Remedy is a very talented team, right? Uh, they have a lot of potential, um, just I think a lot of power in general on that roster. But matched up against Hive, matched up against Fire and Ice, matched up against these top tier rosters, it's... Very easy to see how quickly they fall behind. Again, it's unfortunate that the lag out does happen, but it is what it is. For Hive, though, they're not going to back down. In fact, they're going to play even harder. Drop shot down. We got a lot of chaos on the map, and that's why these two teams are splitting up two and two on top and bottom for Enzim, though. I can't believe he just picked up that elimination on Red 9. That should not have happened. Enzim doesn't, he doesn't care anymore. Enzim is convinced he can win this game with his eyes closed, and that's exactly what he tried to do right there. Got an elimination, four players dead. They're looking to put a final nail in the coffin. They said enough playing around. We're ready to take our finals and hopefully take number one in the standings. Big drop shot coming out. That's going to connect with Red Nine. Players finally stepping into the hill to get this triple cap domination to go through. Relic doesn't even sniff the hill. Neither does Days, and that is the game, ladies and gentlemen, as Hive secures a five to zero victory on map number two to close this one out. Yes, they do. And this is going to be their second time in grand finals in the previous two weeks. They were there in week number one. They played against Fire and Ice. And as much the same result here in week number two, they will be in grand finals to play against Fire and Ice. One thing is for certain, though, when it comes to Hive or F and I, both teams are well on their way to joining the Pro League as they are already leading the charge in the Pro League stand or excuse me, in the Pro League qualifier standings. And they're also leading tonight good job on high for taking that victory they look strong they look good but how are they going to play versus f and i and that's gonna be one of my biggest worries because you saw how close that f and i game was it was a battle kind of towards the very end where the momentum carried by f and i let them mm -hmm. finish that series. On this side of things, though, Hive had an easy, I do believe it was a 5-1 map scoreline. Map number two, really no kind of contestant there either, especially due to the connection issues of Hefe. So are they warmed up? Are they ready to play? Or are they kind of feeling themselves? I want to see them take a moment to reset against this Fire and Ice squad because they definitely cannot play them the same, or at least not to start. 
No, they absolutely can. They, they know what Fire and Ice is going to bring to the table. They played them again in week number one of the Pro League qualifiers. They even played them in semifinals of our last week's E-Days. That was a very close series. Literally came down to map three, one round away. So that last round, Hive could have moved forward just as much as FNI ended up moving forward. Regardless, though, they can't become lackadaisical. They have to come in and be ready to go. And Enzim cannot afford to let plays like that go. They need to be firing in all cylinders if they want to beat the boys of FNI. But all things considered, I enjoyed watching Remedy play. Again, 